So at this point on Wednesday afternoon, we're happy to be able to report that detectives have been able to account for everybody who we know of who lived in this complex. That is extraordinary, given the intensity of this fire and how quickly it spread through the building. So we're really grateful for residents for getting in touch with us and letting us know that they're safe. This tragic fire started yesterday um, around 3.30 in the morning. So most residents were sleeping, as you might imagine, and had a terrifying experience trying to get out of the building. The fire chief is really crediting the responders and the residents themselves for evacuating quickly. We were able to prevent major injuries and really potentially deaths in this situation. The police department fortunately had a couple of officers who were patrolling very close by when this call came in. So we had our first officer on scene within two minutes. In all, we had 12 officers from the Boulder Police Department sweep through this bur these burning buildings. They estimate they probably were able to access about 60 units, helping people who were already starting to evacuate or people inside the units get out safely. There were some units that frankly were burning too hot for us to get into, but today we've been able to determine that those residents are safe and accounted for. So when you see the firefighters behind you, what are they doing today? They are um, continuing to deal with hot spots in the and what they can in terms of um, where the fire might have started and any kind of cause, which we're not releasing at this time because we're still investigating. The big question has always been sprinklers and alarms. Were they okay. So there were some sprinklers and some fire alarms in the areas where this fire burned hottest that did activate. And we believe that that helped residents escape safely. But they're not all designed to activate. It depends on how close you are to the proximity of the blaze. Where, you mentioned the hottest part of the fire. Where was the hottest part of the fire? In the central part of the buildings. We'll be able to take you there to get some B-roll after we finish talking today. Usually when there's an investigation you know of, like this, come? excuse me, gentlemen, Usually when there's an investigation like this, um, there's usually kind of a rough period of time that it would take at least because people want to know when people possibly even think about getting back into their homes. I think you'll see when I take you in closer to the hot spots of this fire that it's very unsafe and very unstable for people to be in the actual building wreckage. Um, we're hoping to be able to get people, and we want to just say that while we don't have any fatalities, we understand that what happened here yesterday is an incredible loss and tragedy for the residents who live in these 81 units. They were without their homes. In many cases, they had to flee without their belongings and precious memories from their lives. And so we know that this is incredibly traumatic for them. And our fire department is going to do all we can to try to help them through this recovery process. And what's the biggest challenge in fighting a fire like this, this kind of structure? It's the number of units that are impacted, the ability of the fire to spread from one unit to another, and frankly, in this case, the heat and intensity of this fire. Although the fire crews were also on scene very quickly, it wasn't until 5.40 in the morning, so we're talking a couple of hours later, that they were able to be comfortable with this being at a controllable point. So that should give you an idea of just how big of an impact this was to these units. ATF on the scene all day today. Yeah. So in a fire this size, with this many people impacted and displaced, it is not at all unusual for our local fire department to request ATF services and resources, and we've done that. And they've been really gracious to respond to our request for help, and they've been here working side by side with our local investigators. Do you guys have an idea how many people were impacted, how many you came into contact with, and when some, if any, might be able to come back and take a closer look? Well, you know, I know that there are 81 units. I can't tell you how many people live in each unit. I wouldn't want to speculate on how many people that, that involves. In terms of coming back to take a closer look, at this point, we're really going to be careful about making sure that the scene can be secured. There may be some units that were a little less impacted that we can get access to people access to sooner. We also have a number of vehicles in the underground garage here that don't appear to be damaged by the fire. So the police department has said that if residents have actual keys to their vehicles, they should come here tomorrow along this west fence line and detectives will meet up with them and allow them to access and retrieve their vehicles. We do understand that some residents probably left their units very, very quickly and may not have keys. 
and so we're trying to make arrangements for a locksmith or for the ability for them to get a replacement key and that probably will take until the beginning of next week if people have the ability to get their own key and they want to contact the police department after tomorrow but before that official time next week they're welcome to call the non-emergency dispatch line so what about pets have you guys been able to recover pets do we have any pets dave any pets found uh we found a live cat today so we found a live cat a survival story <laughs> which we love to share you know as i have to said before we've been able to get into some of these units there are some that are simply still too unstable to get in oh just speaking to 81 units everybody is out i mean we cover stories like this and so many people die in situations like this Can it's miraculous yeah, the escape of 81 people in 81 units is truly miraculous and we are incredibly relieved that we don't appear to have any fatalities. Now I do want to temper that a tiny bit. There are some parts of this building that we have not been able to get into. No residents are telling us that they had guests or visitors who were unaccounted for. So we believe at this time there are no fatalities. But my question off that is just can you talk about the evacuation process? I mean, what, what was it was it something that they had in their evacuation plan? Was it the first responders? What was it that led to all these people getting out so quickly? And can you just talk to the response when you did finally realize, you know, hopefully that everybody got out successfully? What was that what does that feel like as as first responders? Right. So the fire chief tells us that they, he believes that that swift evacuation, some of which was done by residents themselves who had the, the, the judgment and the foresight to immediately evacuate, some by first responders, really made a life-changing um, impact on this situation behind me today. Why can you um, about the structure wait, of this building? Let me finish this question okay. and then I'll come back to you, Thank I promise. You. Um, I don't know whether residents had practiced evacuation plans. I mean, I think we're all told that if you smell smoke, try to get out as quickly as you possibly can, staying low to the ground. The evacuation was in the middle of the night, early morning hours. You have to imagine that it was frenzied and frantic and pretty panicked, right? We had a lot of panicked residents that police officers and firefighters were encountering along the way, but people kept their wits about them and they got outside to safety. You know, detectives worked through the night and you have this sort of pit in your stomach about, are we gonna reach everybody? Because we knew we couldn't get inside. We couldn't send responders safely inside. And when they were able to reach that last person in the last unit, I can only imagine that there was a sigh of relief. Obviously, all of our first responders are in this business to save lives. And in this case, it looks like we were able to do so. Fantastic. What can you tell us about the structure of the building? Um, I know different types of buildings, uh, the, the fire will spread at different rates. Yeah, so it is um, a six building complex. There's 81 units in these buildings. They're mostly owner occupied. There's some long-term and short-term rentals in this building. Um, you can see that we've got a lot of brick facing and that's less damaged. A lot of the wood that you'll see when we go back to, to get you some footage of the um, place where the fire burned most, uh, most intensely, um, you know, that all went up as you might imagine. Yeah, so we've had a lot of compassionate community members reaching out. They want to help their neighbors who are clearly going through a devastating time. We are working very closely with the American Red Cross. We believe that that is um, the agency that is best equipped to accept donations. Um, there is information in the press release that I sent out earlier on how to contact the Red Cross and how to give donations. I do want to say that they're not able to take clothing at this time because of the pandemic. So we're asking people not to offer clothing, but certainly monetary support is always appreciated because it's the most flexible kind of support that victims can use in these immediate days after a tragedy like this. Where are they going to live? Like, do they have a plan for how to... So a lot of residents have been able to self-evacuate to friends and families, and we've been able to contact them, and they have a place to stay. In these types of situations, the American Red Cross is often able to provide limited-time hotel vouchers for people to have a roof over their head just while they get their insurance affairs worked out and are able to arrange for some other accommodations. Sure, I'm Sarah Huntley, S-A-R-A-H, H-U-N-T-L-E-Y, and I'm a city spokesperson. Thank you, sir.
And just to wrap up, I guess I would say that we're incredibly grateful for all of the first responders who came to this situation. We had the Boulder Police Department and the Boulder Fire Rescue Department obviously on scene, but we also had mutual aid from a number of other departments. And that kind of public safety partnership is really essential to this kind of an emergency. Our hearts go out to everybody who's been displaced. We're going to do all we can to try to help them retrieve whatever is retrievable. But given the intensity of this blaze, we think they're probably starting over over. So any community support for these residents um, and these community members is very much appreciated. May I ask Thank one you. other question? You mentioned other uh, agencies and stuff. I saw the ATF mm -hmm. here. I addressed that a few minutes ago. I'm sorry, I was That's okay. Like so um, our Boulder Fire Rescue Department asked the ATF to respond to this scene, mostly because of the um, scope and scale of the fire and the devastation that has occurred. It's not at all unusual for our local fire agencies to request that kind of backup and resources. There have been some ATF agents on scene here working side by side with our local investigators. Do you know what, what, what apartment it started in? We're not releasing any information on the origin or potential cause of this fire. We are doing a very thorough investigation. It's not unusual in these types of situations to have samples that have to go off to a laboratory. And so it could be a number of weeks before we have additional information about those types so of none questions. Of the none of the residents to... have given us any information at this point in time that is helpful for the investigation. Okay, but Sir, were those were those apartments occupied? The ones in the middle? Do you know anything about that? Do we know that? If they were occupied? What do you mean the ones in the middle? Yeah, the, where it, like the general area where it started. Do we have anybody who escaped the fire in the oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Several. I mean, I know a couple were, were vacant, but um, where people weren't home, but other ones, yeah, people escaped. I'm, right. I'm just wondering if it started in a place where someone was living or if it was an empty apartment. We're not able to provide that information at this time. You know, when we're talking about people who are accounted for, some of them were accounted for because they were here when the fire happened and they evacuated safely. And yes, there were some in that area where the fire was burning hottest and we're incredibly grateful they got out. Others were maybe not home at the time, and so we had, took us a little bit longer to reach them. What about the intensity and the speed in which it's... By the time the um, fire department got here, which was within seven minutes of the first report of it, a situation, the front, the middle of this um, complex was fully engulfed. Um, so we're talking about a very fast spreading fire. Um, and, you know, when you've got units that are this close, they, it can spread very quickly. Sir, there was one other thing, and excuse me for coming in late. Okay. Uh, I was talking to a couple. They were visiting their son who recently had surgery. Oh, dear. I don't know if you had talked to them before, but they said that there were no sounds of alarms or anything. Can so, you address that again? Yep, I did address that earlier. We believe okay. that the smoke alarms and the sprinkler systems in the areas where the fire was burning hottest did activate and probably um, resulted in some extinguishing of the fire had already spread at that point. There are working sp sprinklers and fire smoke detectors in other parts of this building, but they're designed to go off when it comes to a certain proximity to the flames and the smoke. And so some people may be evacuating from parts of the building that were less impacted and may not have had those alerts. Thanks for accommodating me for showing up with the late, sir. Okay, so I am able to take, um, it looks like we've got two, four, I'm, I'm leaving, Six. so yeah, I'll go over it. Okay, I'm able to take a few cameras back um, within the perimeter just to get some better footage. Um, so, but you have to, we need to have you be escorted at the time of doing that. Can you say anything about like when the next update is expected? Yeah, um, so we're going to do vehicle retrieval for people who have keys tomorrow. Um, we would anticipate that um, we will have something else to say um, for displaced residents by the end of this week but I don't think we'll have investigative updates for some time.